If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It says 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You have to skip and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. Child shall lead them. We are in the midst of a DJ stream. Okay, up next is Sabotage, Morphine Child. Songs in the key of real life. Morphine Child is about a lot of things. PTSD, guilt, regret and the psychological damage that these things can do to a person over time. It is off the last Sabotage studio record, record to date, Poets, Poets and Mad Men. This record is the fourth concept record that the band recorded. It is a, fi uh, it is a fictional story based around the tragic life and death of Kevin Carter. Kevin Carter was a South African photojournalist, but it's a fictional story. So he's a real person, but it's a fictional story. Where does it say fictional? Right here. This record is the fourth concept. It's a fictional story okay. based around the tragic life. And yeah. um, Carter, along with several of his colleagues, became jokingly known in the print media industry as the Bang Bang Club. They earned this m moniker because during this time, they only covered the war <coughs> and upheaval that was happening in South Africa and other troubled countries on the continent at the time. Carter became famous, or infamous, for a picture he took in Sudan. The picture is often referred to as the vulture and the little girl. The photo went viral at a time before going viral was even a thing. The photo shocked and angered many who saw it. Carter received a lot of criticism for not doing anything to help the child in the photo. Oh my gosh. Carter would end up, can you pull up that photo? Which photo? It's called the vulture and the little girl. Okay. So it received a lot of criticism for him not doing anything to help the child in the photo. Carter would end up winning a Pulitzer Prize for the photograph, but his life was already spinning out of control and the harsh criticism he received pushed him over the edge. He took his own life a few months after winning oh, it. Oh, that picture. What the? F this, yeah, this is a famous picture. He didn't help this kid? I mean... I don't know if he didn't help the kid or not. No, that's why he got so much criticism is because he did nothing to help the child. Well, that's what people are saying. I mean, how do we know what he did or didn't do to help the child? Well, wouldn't it have come out? Wouldn't he have said, I absolutely, I blah, blah, blah. If I helped that kid, I wouldn't say a word. What the f You wouldn't say anything? Mm -mm. No, I absolutely would say something. I mean, something. you know me. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't care what people had to say. Well, he obviously cared. Wait, he took his own life? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't understand. Why is it saying a, it's a fictional story? Well, they're probably like doing the song from his perspective, maybe. He took his own life a few months w after winning the prize. The song is as haunting as the photo, and it's a true masterpiece. One of many that John has written in his life. That is so, so sad. Yeah, but see. See what? This to me is like when people say Elon Musk could solve hunger tomorrow. It's like, well, what the fuck are we doing? 
Why are you going to go after this guy? You didn't know there were starving kids in Africa? When you went to get your uh, your grande frappuccino at Starbucks, you didn't know there were starving kids in Africa? Why, why does it fall to one guy to solve this one problem? Like, honestly, the way I look at it, this guy showing this photo probably saved more lives than if he would help this kid directly on camera. But, you know, let's let's look at let's look at what the song actually says. Also, John is singing this one. Uh, okay, one of many that John has written in his life. Also, John is singing this one. Zach Stevens left the band shortly before work began on this record, so John resumes lead vocal duties. No, Riv, all I'm saying is that a prison it by definition is a quote violation of your bodily autonomy. Ninety percent of our laws, River, are are restrictions on what you can do with your body. Even the speed limit is a restriction on what you can do with your body. So this idea that because you have a body you can do whatever you want with it it's just a terrible argument. Um like I said, all of our laws are based on that, on, on, on limitations on what you can do with your body. And a prison has locks and guards because every nobody wants their body in a prison cell. So if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about bodily autonomy, then we've got to revise all of our laws. We gotta we gotta throw out the speed limit, and we have to uh, uh, only hold people in prison who want to be there. That would be the logical ramification of that, in my mind. Okay, here we go, guys. Here's the song, Morphine Child. Um, hopefully, we can get these lyrics up as well. Sabotage, let's do it. This is going to be tough. I think. Is this a lyric video? Do you know? Watch from distant heights 
no breath or motion Still every ghost must haunt in its own way Sleep beneath my dreams Safe within my hands Where I never run
like this. Oh, I wish you'd have done that for another round, bro. Wow, guys, <clears throat> that's, uh, here are, check this out, this is really sad, um, <clears throat> on July, I'm just gonna, just gonna read this, this is about Kevin Carter, the, the guy who shot that picture, and I also have an update on the kid, um, uh, but while I'm doing that, what's what's going on with you? Oh, wow. I mean... Uh, this um, band... Uh, I can't believe this band is not more requested. They're so theatrical. Yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. See, this is like... You're the only other person that I uh, think can do this kind of stuff so well. Mm -hmm. Because you're so theatrical in your, in your singing, which... Mm -hmm people will be able to see soon by the way guys uh if you're a patron we've got a music video that we shot yesterday that we're editing today that'll that'll be up on uh patreon first for you patrons on 27 july 1994 carter drove to parkmore near the field and study center an area where he used to play as a child um and this is what he wrote in his suicide note I'm really, really sorry. The pain of life overrides the joy to the point that joy does not exist. Depressed, without phone, n money for rent, money for child support, money for debts, money. I am haunted by the vivid memories of killings and corpses and anger and pain. Starving or wounded children or trigger-happy madmen, often police of killer executioners. I have gone to join Ken if I am that lucky. The final line is a reference to his recently deceased colleague, Ken Osterbrook. So, um, that he, you know, he had a lot of other issues. Obviously, we talk about the money and obviously depression, but he, uh, it would just it just became too much for him. Well, it sounds like you know from early on in his life, like just from what I was reading here, that he. Like, he saw the plight of, you know, African Americans in America, and he didn't think it was right. And he, his parents were Catholic, and I guess he, um, he questioned his parents, they were Catholic, liberal family, could be what he described as a lackadaisical about fighting against apartheid. Mm -hmm. And um, when he was in the army, I guess, like, he saw, like, a group of people that were um, making fun or going after a black person guy and so he stood up for the black guy and got like really beaten up really really badly mm -hmm. um and then i guess he started photographing like um i guess they call it necklacing executions of you know black africans in south africa stuff like that so he oh he, yeah well, he put was... a tire over your neck and set it on fire <laughs> i didn't know that that's what mama that's what uh What's his face is Nelson Mandela's wife started doing that when they were fighting back. They were starting to do that on the other side too. Like, um, so I guess he was photographing it, and uh, so probably like if you if you're the type of person that is comp you know inclined toward empathy, and then you see all of these things like with that little girl, he he like drove away the vulture, but. He said to Sylvia, and I'm not sure who the, Sylvia is. I assumed it was like his wife or something. He told her like um, that he was shocked by what he just saw, and they they left. Like he didn't he didn't even necessarily. And it does. And he sounds like a very like a like by the other work that he did in his life. Like that's kind of like a surprising response that he didn't like really completely do something, or there's nothing completely like set out that he did anything, except that. If he was in such shock by the situation, you know, I'm not sure that there was a whole lot that could have been. I, I really don't know. But I was thinking, like, when this when this review first started and you were talking about the coffee thing, I was like, you know what? Somebody should create an app where you 
Like the app is just about donations and like in coffee amounts. So you go in, you you get your own like <laughs> login and you choose the coffee place where you shop at and you, you know, you can either just be like, I just want to donate a coffee amount or you can like itemize it. Cause like we have all our special requests that ends up making ours more expensive. So if you go in there and, and then like you can make that, like I think having that app to be able to make that decision, like when you say, you know what, I'm not going to get the coffee for myself. I'd rather, you know, don't donate the coffee to helping a, a child. Um, and then that money just goes directly to helping starving children. Like, I think that if the, if it was that simple, I feel like a lot more people would be like, you know, if you, if you put out commercials about it and then you just say, download this app and then they just, you know, it's connected to your bank. So you just donate a, donate a coffee. When you decide I'm not going to drive through and, you know, serve myself another coffee, I'd rather help a kid. I think that having it very easy to just kind of hit the button and, and be able to make that, like, cause you might say, well, I'm not going to get the coffee. I'm going to donate it. But then like the donation process, like to, to, to stop and take the time and find the place and you know, all that stuff, it might end up taking too much and people might not end up doing it. Um, but I think if it was just an, a, a quick app that you just, you know, click a button and say, donate a coffee. And then, you know, a little thing comes up with confetti, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, another child has been fed. Like, I, I just think that that would be. Uh, cool. If you are a villager and you're a patron or you're a, um, you've bought a DJ stream or if you've, if you've ever done anything, um, you, you've helped us. We're doing how many kids right now? Uh, four, three, four. We've got about three or four kids that we support overseas and it's not just food, but it's also education. Yeah, it's a, and it's a monthly thing. A lot of these kids in South America, if they if they age out of school and they're not ready to graduate or whatever, the the uh, or, or or if they're not in school, right? So they hit 13, 14 or whatever, the the cartel will scoop them up if you're a boy and they'll also scoop you up if you're a girl for obvious reasons. One of my friends actually flew out there because he was adopting two girls and they were three days away from age. the oldest one was three days away from aging out of the orphanage and if she did the cartel was just going to scoop her up and take her to, to to traffic her and uh i can't tell like all the story but he got jammed up over there like because that's a lot of money those girls i mean those beautiful girls i mean i did i show you ever show you a picture beautiful girl and um they were they were, they jammed him up. I mean, it's a crazy. He's gonna he's writing a book about it and stuff. So I'm not gonna, but like, my my point is, <clears throat> if you've done anything monetarily to this channel, you're supporting three, maybe four. I think there we picked up a fourth kid when we for, uh, we probably need to look back and. I know I've been trying to log in for. Yeah, we probably need to look back and and see yeah. if, see about. Um, but anyway, so my point is if you, if you're part of our channel, you're part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's, it's getting these kids education, food and housing, clothes, and um, shoes. and clothes and it, it protects them from the, from, from getting, you know, I think it helps set them up with a trade also. Yeah. Uh, no, Amy, it doesn't, I'm saying that the app would be like you're donating the price of a coffee, but it but the the money is not going to a coffee shop. The money is going to an organization that distributes the money to starving children. So it's just that it, it would be so easy if you had an app to click on the app and then donate a coffee that, you know, like let's say your coffee is $7 or your coffee is $3 or some people get 99 cent coffees over at Cumbies. So if you get a 99 cent coffee, then you, you know, you can decide like, okay, then 99 cents is going to go to a star starving child. So then all it is, is like you sign into your app and you click the button and the money, you know, the money goes. So like you make that decision where the transaction's happening right then. I would have bought myself a coffee. I would have bought myself a soda, whatever, but instead I'm not. And the money is going to go, go toward a child. So this guy, you know, him, him taking uh, and furthermore in 2011 the child's father revealed the child was actually a boy kong young and had been taken care of by the un food aid station young had died four years prior uh due to fevers according to his family it's just a really haunting picture because it really is because it, it's almost like that this this vulture is like he's just waiting it's like business as usual yeah like this has happened before 
Um, and right now, kids are, this is happening in Yemen. I know, I, I'm looking around on Facebook for all the Yemeni flags because we're, we're the most compassionate people in the world. I don't see anybody with Yemeni flags, though. I don't see any of that. Um, but those kids are being starved out. Like, uh, it, it's almost like, see, like if you read Wars of the Jews and Siege Warfare and all that, it's almost like that. 500,000... <coughs> <coughs> 500,000 people have died over there, uh, many of them kids. And, um, yeah, I guess I'll emotionally manipulate you and tell you that they died a horrible, slow, painful death. Um, and thanks to our country and its, and its, and its allies. Um, so, but the, the, the bigger, the larger issue, this guy took his life and he said he, he had seen... He just saw too much um yeah only only angelina jolie is saying stuff when he says i've seen too much killing the corpses the anger the pain the starving wounded children like that's one of my major concerns about the current age we live in in social media is now people are becoming eyewitnesses to the worst atrocities in the world and you can rewind it and watch it again yeah bc I agree. There, there are applications. You know, I'm, I'm following, I'm following Ukrainian folks on Telegram, and I'm also following Russian folks on Telegram, and it's just clips after clips of combat and body after body after body after body and mangled people and people celebrating and spiking the football and laughing and being happy and. You know, I, I I think we are all collectively traumatizing ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like for me, I know, like, for example, like I generally never report on police shootings of black people because I know the mental state that it puts me in. I know yeah. where it leads me as far as like what, you know, how that, you know. So I, I stay away from that stuff. I don't look at videos, you know. I I just I just stay away from all that information because yeah. just because the video is out sections. there does not mean yeah that you should look at it. Yeah. Like you don't have to look at it. Right. And and like I I'm really terrified that the entire damn Western world that all of us are, are are mentally ill now because all of us are traumatized because it is unnatural to see all that kind of human suffering. And then on top of it, the worst part is not even the image itself. It's the reaction of either apathetic people or people who are celebratory of this stuff. Right. And if you still have that semblance of humanity in you, That's the worst thing of all is the apathetic way in which we handle, you know, human suffering as long as it's not happening, happening to us. And that's something that, you know, we have to really, really think through. It's like, you know, I don't need to know. I don't need to know. Like, I I, I don't need a consistent like I we don't have to see that stuff over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be one thing if if there was some sort of narrative out there that this wasn't happening. Yeah. You know, like if people were denying that there was a war in between Russia and Ukraine, then of course, then you would have to see that to to validate or invalidate it. But we don't have to constantly feed ourselves on human trauma and and destruction. And I, I part of me feels like some of the coldness and apathy that we all have to our fellow man has a lot to do with the fact that we're overloaded with this horrible imagery. And as a defense mechanism, our minds are starting to revert Mm -hmm. to just plain apathy so that we Mm -hmm. don't have to feel the, the weight of it. It was funny. I I was sitting down next to Zoe yesterday and there was a uh, clip of Jurassic park. And in one of the clips, the dinosaur just like stepped on someone and she started crying and she goes, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not, and I'm like, no, 
you're supposed to be upset that people are dying, even if it's a fictional story and a fictional depiction of people dying, because in the universe of that story, the person getting it's squashed alive. by the Tyrannosaurus yep. is somebody's daughter or cousin or friend or spouse yep. or whatever. Yep. So that should affect you. But it just, it, I said, I said, I said, Zoe, you're the only, you're the only mentally right one in this room right now. Everybody, it's the mm -hmm. rest of us that have the problem, not mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that that still affects you like that, and and, and it, it gets you emotionally. That's the right response. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with the rest of us for not feeling that mm -hmm. anymore. And you know, so you know, this poor guy. He probably that picture probably um, inspired so many people to help Africa. Yeah. And, and the Sudanese. Well, maybe he never thought of that. And so it just felt like... You you can't see it, right? He He's seeing all this death and destruction. Yeah. He doesn't see the the 20-year-old newly married woman who opens up the thing and sees a picture and says, we have to do something. Yeah. And so she, she took out of her whatever budget to help these kids. He doesn't get to see that. All yeah. he sees is this consistent Rolodex of these horrible memories of what he had to, to see and you know his mission was to expose it so that it could it could you know get some get some influence so that that people could be helped but he wasn't able to see I the depth of his contribution to out, outweigh that trauma that he exposed himself to go ahead yeah i don't i'm not saying that this is just an all-around fix for everything but I do think that, you know, like there's a show that we're watching and the guy was really discouraged beyond hope. And he was basically saying like, what, what even is there left? Like he had lost everything, even his, even his belief in God. And then the other character looked at him and he said, you have a son mm -hmm. and that child is hope, you know, hope that that, you know, there's so much hope that's all, that's bound up in a child. And there's a lot of people that, that make the decision to never have children because they don't want to bring children into this crazy world um yeah but you you forfeit so much hope and so much joy and and because i think that as we age we lose track of simple things like when but when you have a little kid they force you to see the balloon that's floated to the ceiling yeah. at the walmart <laughs> you know that you would have missed because you're so busy but yes. they're in awe and wonder that there's a balloon way up there or you know, they, you know, raise us at this point, he's a year and a half and he points at everything. Look at this, dad. Look at that. Look at that. Everything is look at that. Look at that. Because he's just discovering the entire world around him. And like when you see that excitement over such small things and um, and you realize that that's something that you've lost, um, but yeah. it kind of like rekindles it because it's like, yeah, it's true. Like stop and, and look, there's, there's a helicopter, <laughs> there's clouds, there's the sun, there's the, you know, our kids are obsessed with the moon, Ryan and Reza. They love, oh, Ryan will tell me that he opened the shade and he looked at the moon, he saw the moon and he just can't, he, he said the, the moon, the moon was there for me. <laughs> And, um, yeah, and I was like, he thinks that the moon just popped up just because of him alone. I mean, I think that God loves him enough to, to do well, something like he, that. He, but Well, if, if Hoffman is right, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's definitely right. The yeah. moon showed up just for him. But it's just, um, I don't know. Like, I, I wonder, like, would that have changed something for him? Or did he feel so hopeless that, it, that he had that mindset where it was like, because what well, he, he listed, talked about child support. So he did have a kid, but obviously it didn't work out, which, right. which, and I, yeah. I classify this guy as a warrior, which is something that a lot of warrior, like I said, it's, it's very hard on the marriage. It's very difficult because you have this earth shattering, soul crushing existential moment and they cannot relate to you. Yeah. They cannot. And especially as a correspondent like him, where all he can do is take pictures. Yeah. Whereas in other situations, like if you hurt one of my friends, that's okay because we're going to tool up and we're going to come make you feel how we feel. Right, right. So, so there's a sort of like, yeah. I, I, I squared that. And yeah. that's how you go to sleep at night. Whereas this situation, all he could do is take a picture. 
Right. And he doesn't see how it gets squared because, again, he's inspiring people to do stuff, but he's not seeing that. All he's yeah. seeing is this horrible destruct. It's it's funny, like when right. I was and in, he when wouldn't I, have even known like reaction videos. When I was in Psych, when I was in Psych. Well, if he would have if he would have given himself a shot, he would have been able to see. Yeah, you know what I'm yes, saying. Yes, because he was born in the '60s. But so when I could have seen I, it, when, yeah, yeah. When I was in Psych Ward, we were it was a ho- it was still a hospital, and so they would play a chime every time a baby was born. Yes. And I remember, because I was you know I was mega dark, and that that ward had hey Becky that ward had people who were serious about dying. It was really yeah you know, horrible. Uh, and I was the baby there, but they put me there instead of the uh, the age appropriate one because I was, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I remember being like talking to Petzl, my doctor, and I was like, it's really horrible hearing that chime. She said, why? I'm like, these poor kids are coming into this horrible world or whatever, whatever. And she said, uh, she said, yeah. She said, or that kid that was just born could be the cure for cancer or that kid could yeah. make the world a little bit better or right. that kid. And you know, when you're in the d- the depths of depression, I was like two weeks away from like, I thought I was going to, you know, like leave this world. Right. Yeah. So, so I couldn't see the wisdom in that at the yeah. time, but after, I've heard you say that a lot of times since then. if you give yourself, if you give yourself enough time you can end up seeing it. It's funny because you know Orion has this little ritual that he does when he when he wants to go when it's time for him to go to bed and he doesn't want to sleep. He'll call you over and says, "Hey, you want to lie down with me?" Yeah. And the way that he says it, it's it's impossible right. to say no. No, because he's not like saying, "Hey, can you?" But he says, yeah. "Do you want to?" So if you say no, it's like you don't want to be with him. It's it's yeah. it's sad. Yeah, um, yeah, and. And so I laid down with him and he starts showing off. He says, this is my finger. This is my hand. That's your beard. That's your head. And then he started asking me, what's this? What's this? You know, and he was just showing off and showing like he's very proficient. He knows his body. Yeah. He knows his finger. Um, And you just find so much hope. That's why, like, I want 50,000 kids, man. <laughs> like, I, I, it's just they bring so much joy and hope and promise like i wish everybody like i know it's you know we're sitting around the table yesterday you know like i was like man i'm a i'm a millionaire man like this shit is crazy but (laughs) yeah rest in peace to the homie it's uh uh, you you know i I, the music itself was also really banging especially toward the end this band i'm blown away this band should be like mega mega main stage. They're yeah. very unique. Yeah. They're very metal. They I like the 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 theatrical way yeah, in which he sings. Too. Like yeah. it's like a I don't know if you guys are familiar with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, but he's kind of like a musical genius. He does these musicals and stuff. And so it, it kind of reminded me of that type of uh skill. Really, really, really good. Um what do you get the song? Uh, 9.8. I'm going to give this one a silent count. Uh, I feel really terrible for the homie. I feel so I bad for him. I know. Um, you know. Uh, Rest in peace. The Lord being gracious, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, really, really good song. Really good song. Tough situation, man. Uh, you know, I, I look at that guy honestly the way that I would look at a martyr to be honest with you like yeah. I think I think we need to reimagine how yeah. we talk about people who who die that way yeah cuz I understand that it was self-inflicted but there comes a point when some of these people like uh, it it's it's almost like a second person that does it to them when they when mm-hmm. they're in that in that state of mind I just I just the worst thing about it, I just wish he could have been around long enough to 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 see um, how much good he did do in the world, and how much he inspired, yeah. how much he inspired people. Well, and that's he can see it now, and that's true of a lot of you guys too. You know, a lot of you guys, you don't give yourself a chance to see how much good you've done and how much, uh, or what you're capable of. I think a lot of times people underestimate themselves and they feel like they're just a fuck up, and it's always going to be like that. 
Um, yeah. But there's a there's a spot. We have this this friend. I mean, she's quirky as fuck. Sometimes she just really gets on my nerves. But like, I remember that there was one there was one person that would always ask for her. When is she coming around? When is she coming around? Remember? Yeah. And like, I mean, plenty of other people were very nice to this person, but they wanted her. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's just there's somebody for everybody that, you know, there's somebody out there that you can help out. Yeah, but but a lot of like BC, like BC says a lot of bad stuff about himself or whatever. But I he's one of the guys I look for every time we log in. Yeah, he's one of the guys I look for. You know, and I and I just got an email from Ben. Like, there's just there's just people that, you know, I hope you guys give yourself a shot to appreciate yourself and appreciate the fact that you've you've impacted people. Nobody's perfect, so if you've done bad things or you don't fit in or whatever, that's to be expected. But there, you you guys, just give yourself a chance to see the other side of how you've positively affected people, because um, I I think that that's that's important. And it should be recognized. So, yeah. BC, you're one of those people. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. It's a silent count for me. Rest in peace to the homie. Hopefully, he finds a peace. Hopefully, hopefully, him and uh, that little boy are reunited. And, and uh, that would be a good reunion, huh? The guy and the little boy that he took the picture of? <laughs> yes. That'd be good. Uh, Jesus writes good movies, so I'm sure... I'm sure we're going to see that replay, inshallah. All right, guys. Uh, we're coming right back with more metal goodness. Coming your way. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.